A bug moves in the coordinate plane, starting at 0, 0 on the first turn. The bug moves one up, down, left, or right, each with equal probability on subsequent turns. The bug moves one unit up, down, left, or right, choosing with equal probability among the three directions other than the its previous move. For example, if the first move was one unit up, the second move has to be either down, left, or right. After four moves, what is the probability the bug is at 2, 2? Draw a little graph. So this is obviously the origin, and 2, 2 is right here. So this is where we want to be, right here, 2, 2. Okay, so let's see. We have after one move, after two moves, after three moves, and after four moves. Where will you be? Now, where's the starting point? After one move, you can either be one up, one down, one left, or one right. So one up would be 0, 1. One down, uh, well, actually, hold on. Yeah, one up would be 0, 1. One down would be 0, negative 1. One to the left would be negative 1, 0. And one to the right would be um, 1, 0. Okay, now, these two guys, I want to talk about those first. Because let's say I went down uh, so I'm here, right? That's the 0, negative 1. If you go there, it's impossible to get to 2, 2 with 3 moves. Try it. You can't do it. So even if you went up to the right, so you're here, then you have 3 more moves. So 1 move, 2 moves, 3 moves, impossible to get there. So just cross that out. Same thing with the left. If you started here, which is negative 1, and now you've got 3 moves to get to 2, 2. 1 move, 2 moves, 3 moves, can't get there. So those two are out. So the only hope is with this guy or with this guy. Okay. So we want our final destination to be uh, 2, 2. Okay, like any probability question, the probability of something is usually a fraction. This is the total, and this is the specific condition. Okay, so let's see. We want this to end up to be 2, 2, and we want this to be 2, 2, right? But the total is a much, much bigger number. First, let's figure out the total number of possibilities. For each one that you start with, the next one, you've got three possibilities. So, for example, if you went up, the next one you could go down, right, or left. And then for each one of these guys, again, three possibilities. So if this was three, this will be three times three, which is nine. You understand? And then similarly, this would be th nine times three, which is 27. So 27 possible destinations uh, after four moves for each of them. For this guy, for this guy, and for this guy. Oh, hold on, let me see. Yeah, you guys understand, right? Okay. So in total, we got that 27, that 27, that 27. Four times 27, basically. So 108. So 108 is actually what's going in the denominator. The numerator is our specific condition. And our specific condition is we want to end up in 2, 2. So in how many ways can we end up in 2, 2? Well, let's see. Let's start with this guy here, 0, 1. So where is 0, 1? Right here. You can go this way, then you can go this way, and then you can go this way. So that's it. There's only one path, so only one. Now, you might say, well, why, if I, why don't you just go up and then across 2? Because you can't do the same move t uh, two in a row. Yeah, if you go, uh, if you make a move, then you have to do the next move that's different than the previous move. So that's why it's got to change every time. And similarly with this guy here, if we've got one zero, which is here, then uh, let's see, one, two, three, one. Yeah, we'd have to go up, across, and up. That's the only way. So there's only one way to get there. So 1 plus 1 is 2. So 2 over 108 is the probability, which, of course, reduces to 1 over 54. This month, I spent 26 days exercising for 20 minutes or more, 24 days exercising for 40 minutes or more, and 4 days of exercising 2 hours exactly. I never exercise for less than 20 minutes, or for more than two hours. What is the minimum number of hours I could have exercised this month? 
let's make a number line here. So we've got 20 minutes, 40 minutes, and well, way out here is two hours. And let's say this is zero. So this interval A, this interval B, this interval C. Okay. So they're saying, let me see, what are they saying here? Uh, I never exercise less than 20 minutes. Okay, so that means that A is zero. That interval is zero. Okay. Then, uh, and I never exercise more than two hours, so we don't have to worry about that interval. So uh, I don't even need to label it. And then 24 days exercising 40 minutes or more. So I guess that means C is the 24, and then 26 days exercising for 20 minutes or more. Oh, wait, 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 wait. I think I made a mistake there. I don't think you can do it like that. A is zero. I'm confident about that. Uh, uh, okay, I do need to label D as exactly the two hours. Aha. Uh -huh. no, okay. So now let's talk about it. So 26 days is the uh, exercising for 20 minutes or more. So 20 minutes or more would be B plus C plus D. And then 24 days of exercising 40 minutes or more. So 40 minutes or more would be the C plus D. Okay, so that's the proper setup. So from this, you can easily figure out that B is... Uh, and what are we trying to figure out what is a minim oh, minimum number of days a minimum number of hours I could have exercised so we're going to have to solve for all of these guys um, so B is 2 and therefore I take advantage of the last uh, this one 4 days of exercising exactly uh, two hours, so that means D is four. Okay, so if D is four, that means C is 20. Okay, so we got all the three values fairly quickly, most of it just from the question uh, wording. Okay, so now the minimum number of hours, if we have B is two, that interval is two, but we want the minimum, so we'll take 20 minutes. So two days at 20 minutes, uh, and they want hours, so I gotta convert that to hours. And then C is 20, so 20 times that interval, but we want the minimum, so 40 over 60. And then finally, D is uh, 4, and that's 2 hours. So that's going to be, let me see if I did that right, um, 20 over 60 times 2, 40 over 60 times 20, and 4 times 2. So that's going to be, Uh, one third times two, so two over three, plus two over three times twenty, so forty over three, and then plus eight. So that's going to be forty-two over three plus eight, and forty-two over three is fourteen. Fourteen plus eight is twenty-two. Twenty-two hours is the answer. 3 by 3 grid, 9 dots, labeled A through M, is shown. There's one path connecting every pair. Uh, turtle walks along this grid, alternating between orthogonal and diagonal moves. One could describe any sequence of paths in terms of letters. For example, ABF describes the two paths AB and BF. What is the maximum number of paths the turtle could transverse, given that it does not transverse any path more than once? Let's split this up into uh, orthogonal and diagonal paths. So diagonal, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. There's going to be eight of those. And uh, B, B, D, E, A. I mean, you can list them fairly easily. D, L, K, E. Uh, B, F, E, C, F, L, and M, E. Okay, so those are the eight. And then the orthogonal, uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, I believe. 12 is the total. 
Now, I'm not going to list them because we actually want uh, one continuous sort of, uh, um, how you say, path. And I don't think you're going to be able to cross or uh, uh, utilize all eight diagonal and all 12 orthogonal. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Yeah, I don't think that's possible because eventually you'll run into a problem, meaning you'll have to go over the same path twice, and that's not allowed. You cannot transverse any path more than once. Okay, so it's a little challenging, actually. Not that easy. I think as long as we get one single path, then we can figure out how what this number will be. Yeah, I'm pretty sure one, two... One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Uh, <laughs> I think you can do all eight diagonal. One, two, three. But then this this number will will not be at full twelve. Okay, so let's just let's just have one such path. And then if we have one such path, so A, B, D, E, A, D. L K E B F E C F L M E L. So there's many, but let's just do this one. So A to B, B to D, D to E, E to A, A to D, D to L, okay, L to K, K to E, E to B. B to B to what? B oh that's an F. B to F. F to E. E to C. C to F. F to L. L to M. M to E. E to L. Ah okay. So that path is the longest and you notice we were not able to go bc dk and fm so these three we couldn't reach so of the 12 we could reach nine so nine and those eight so 17 is the total in terms of the maximum and i don't think you'll be able to go higher than 17 so that is the answer Consider triangle ABC with angles BAC, 24 ACB, 28 point D is constructed such that AB is parallel to CD, AD is equal to BC, AD and BC are not parallel. Similarly, point E is constructed such that AE is parallel to BC, AB is equal to CE and AB and C are not parallel. Lines DE and AC intersect at P, determine the angle CP. Okay, let's draw in the diagram the best that we can. So here is the diagram. And you'll notice a couple things. Uh, the diagram is drawn in such a way that you've got those points on a circle. And because the points are on a circle, that helps us. So for example, uh, I'll do the, the first part as the angle DEA, DEA. That angle is going to be equal to the angle DCA. Now the reason is because both of those point both of those angles start from AD and they subtend from the same two points. So because they subtend from the same two points, they're gonna be equal. Alright. So I'm gonna have a hard time squeezing in all the angles here, so I'm gonna have to increase this. And yeah, let me even that's that's not gonna be easy. But um let's see what I can do. I'll, I'll make it as big as possible. And then our first uh, conclusion, of course, was that DEA was the same as angle DCA. And that, of course, DEA and DCA, and that holds true because they're on a circle and they subtend from the same two points, AD. Okay, so now let's do the angle chasing, and the rest should be relatively straightforward. Okay, so here we go, angle chasing. 
So A, B, C, that one, that's basically going to be, well, we have to label these first. Uh, if I label them based on the, what the information was in the question, this was 24 and that was 28. So A, B, C is just 180 minus that 24 minus that 28, and that is 128. So B, uh, yeah, 128. So that's 128 there. Okay. So A, C, E, that's the next one. Yeah, A, C, E, that angle, that is just going to be um, A, C, E. B, C is what I meant to say, B, C, E. Now that angle, because we are told that these two, angle, these two sides are the same. So if those two sides are the same, then that means that angle is the same as that angle. So therefore, BCE would be 128. Yeah, BCE would be 128. So therefore, ACE would just be the 128 minus that 28, which is 100. So that angle is 100. I'll just put it in there somewhere. Yeah, I'll just write it there, 100. Okay, and then uh, we had concluded this very early. That needed to be talked about early. And that's because of the fact that I already explained they're on the same circle and they subtend from the same two points. So D, E, A is the same as D, C, A. These two lines are parallel. So that means from that property of parallel lines, that would be the same as that. That 28 would be the same as that. And are there any other parallel lines? Uh, I think this line is parallel to this line. So that would mean that, well, that doesn't really help me. But at least I got the 28 in there. Now, we also know that this side is the same as that. So this whole angle is also 128. So since that's 24 and that's 28, that angle in there is going to be 76. Yeah, because that whole thing has to add up to 128. Okay, we're getting somewhere. By the same principle that uh, you know two angles subtended from the same point are the same, if you go from D D A, you create D A E, right? That angle is 76, but that's also the same as D C E. So D C E, this guy in here will be 76, and therefore you can just subtract that from 100 to get 24. Okay, I think we're we're very close to what we need here. And now we can finally, uh, since we have the, which angle is it, DCA? Yeah, DCA, we figured out was 24, then DEA is 24. So DEA, that's 24. There we go. And I think we just need one more piece of the puzzle, which is that angle. And we can easily do that. Just take 180 and subtract 24, 28, and 76. And when you do, you'll get 52. And therefore, since uh, same kind of story, A and C subtend to form A, D, C, those, and that is 52, that would be the same as A, E, C, because A and C subtend to form that angle as well. So that would mean this whole thing is 52. Yeah. That one right there. Okay. So that triangle, uh, I have to draw it kind of here because I, I can't show it. This was P way out there. That's C and that's E. That P is what we're trying to figure out. This angle in here we have concluded was uh, 24 plus 76, which is 100. And this angle in here would be 52 plus 24, which is 76. So therefore, theta plus 100 plus 76 is equal to 180, and therefore theta is 4. So quite a bit of angle chasing there, but the fact that it's on a circle, that really helps.